Doctors of Reddit, what was the worst thing you've seen for a patient that another doctor overlooked? Broken neck. No really. So this one guy was brought in with an ambulance for upper airway obstruction. We diagnosed what looked like an advanced throat cancer and did a tracheostomy. After the operation, where you pull and push the neck like crazy, we checked his neck x-ray and a junior asks when did he break his neck. He had a brand new unstable neck fracture. Checking his initial x-ray we see that it was there prior to the operation. After questioning the patient he said that on his way to the hospital the ambulance was in a car crash. No one bothered mentioning it to us when he eventually came in. He only thought he had some whiplash, but he was a few millimeters away from permanent paraplegia. Unfortunately he passed away about two weeks later due to the cancer. Patient was lactating but not pregnant or breastfeeding. Previous doctor told her it was residual from her baby that had been weaned for 14 months. Sent her immediately for a brain scan, brain tumor. She had surgery a week later to remove it and is doing very well now. Edit, wow, I didn't think anyone would even read this or I would have explained better tried to sound a bit more professional. I did not do any of the follow-up care. She left my office with a referral for an MRI and a referral to an endocrinologist, who took over care. Also, please, if you are concerned about your health in any way or are not happy with your doctor care, obtain your medical records and bring them with you to a different doctor. Don't solicit medical advice from strangers on the internet that know nothing at all about your medical history. That is very dangerous to your health. This happened to me. My daughter was 5 years old and I was still lactating. My doctors didn't listen and told me my husband was playing with my breast too much. I went to my cousin, who is Ubjin, and she spoke with my doctor and he ran some tests. Turns out I have a rat's cleft pouch on my pituitary gland. It was drained and came back. Due to other doctors not listening to me, it took another eight years for them to find out I have Addison's disease. By then, I shocked everyone that I was even alive. Edit Hi everyone. Wow, I never expected this to go anywhere. My journey started in the early 90s and I am still getting diagnosis. There are wonderful doctors in this world, especially in America although our medical system is terrible, and my story is one of many that proves how hard it is to be heard in this world while being a woman. I was young then and as I got older my voice has gotten much stronger. My conversations with my doctors go a lot differently. Thank you guys for the awards, and great conversation. I appreciate you all. Edit 2. If any of you have medical questions call your doctors. I am not a doctor. I'm just a regular person that's been through some stuff. I started lactating at 19, having never been pregnant, and that the doctor I saw also told me I was playing with my boobs too much. I was so embarrassed. Being young and not knowing better, I just lived with it and wouldn't allow my now husband near my boobs and wouldn't even touch them in the shower. It took six years and finally trying, and failing, to start a family and having super irregular periods before a new doctor diagnosed me with hyperprolactinemia. All it would have taken that original doctor was to run a simple blood test instead of telling me to stop playing with myself and acting like I was a pervert. I am so sorry you had to go through this st the hands of a stupid doctor. How are you now? Everything turned out fine once I found a doctor that wasn't a complete moron. The doctor that diagnosed my issue had no plans to treat it and pretty much had a sucks to be you attitude so it took another year to get in with a doctor that realized there is a medication designed just to treat my condition, after I got on the correct medication I stopped spontaneously lactating, regulated my period ovulation, and went on to have two healthy children. I hope that you have fared well since getting your own correct diagnosis. I can't imagine how much more taxing an experience it was for you considering it was life-threatening. My husband had a weird dimpled spot on his back. Went to the dermatologist multiple times, was brushed off and told not to worry about it. Derm even burned off a nodule that was bothering him, at his belt line, but repeatedly said it was nothing and was visibly irritated with us for being anxious. We waited for nearly 10 years before going to another dermatologist, since our experience was so negative. Next Derm immediately diagnosed what turned out to be a sarcoma which had 10 extra years to grow. My husband now has a 48-inch scar snaking down his back from the removal of the tumor and the reshaping of his back. I now have months of experience with wound drains, tunneling, bandages, triage and the laundry that comes with massive wound healing. I would like to take that first dermatologist who was so ducking patronizing with our concerns and shove his face deeply into his own ass. My friend's sister had a very similar experience. 10 years of asking about it and no doctor took her seriously until she was pregnant. She died 2 years later. Edited at a typo, going to take this opportunity to say you are never too young to have cancer. Everyone waved her off saying you're too young, it's just a mole. 
If you think something is off, pester your doctor until you get the attention and tests you need and deserve. Good God. I'm so sorry for your loss. Rest in peace. I didn't really know her, but thanks. It was very hard on her family. Not a doctor but my grandma had lost feelings in her hands and felt hot even in winter with the windows open, just some of the symptoms. She went to the doctors multiple times but was only ever told she was getting old and these things happen, one doctor even said she was wiring her watch too tight. She ended up having carpal tunnel surgery in one of her hands as they thought that might be one of the problems but it didn't help at all. Fast forward a bit and my grandma is basically bedridden and cannot do anything, she looked up her symptoms online and found things saying she may have a tumor. So my grandma being the determined woman she has managed to get her GP to recommend her to an expert. Turns out she had a tumor growing on the casing on her spinal cord, and they had to operate immediately otherwise she would be paralyzed from the neck down. Luckily the surgery went okay despite a risk of her not making it as she was in her late 80s and she is recovering however multiple years later she is still suffering from the effects of the unneeded carpal tunnel surgery. Long story short the doctors mistook a tumor on my grandma's spinal cord for her wiring her watch too tight. My grandma got rushed to surgery with a risk of being paralyzed and is doing okay but still recovering. My best friend's mom died of breast cancer. Doctor told her she was just sleeping in a bad position, and that was what caused her pain in her armpit. I suppose I have one for this as a resident doctor. We saw a kid in the EMERG for difficulty walking. He had been slowly losing the ability to walk over months, and also had random unexplained projectile vomiting episodes. Looking at his records, he saw his doctor several times who x-rayed one hip. Then the other hip. Gave some Zofran etc. Turns out on exam he is blatantly ataxic, bad coordination, and can't even stand. Failed all our bedside neurological examinations for cerebellum function. It was obvious to me and I'm not even good at this yet. Did a CT scan. Big ass tumor in his cerebellum. It was obstructing fluid drainage in his brain too, raising his intracranial pressure and causing the vomiting. Had to call in the neurosurgeons overnight for emergency drain and he went to ICU. Later had more surgery for the tumor. My supervisor got pretty emotional about it actually. Edit, thanks everyone. The history was that he really declined further over the last few days prompting the ed visit, so he looked really bad for us but I'm not sure what he looked like before. To any med students reading this one. Do an exam. Two it's okay to cry sometimes. Jesus, that's horrible. Was he okay, do you know? I haven't followed up yet because our children's hospital uses its own emmer and I've been at other hospitals. Just based on the scan though I think it would be hard to survive long term and he would have deficits if so. My supervisor made a comment about how he's the same age as my kid, and was visibly upset by it. Really tough situation as a resident to be in but we did our job. If it makes you feel better there are a number of non-aggressive pediatric tumors in the cerebellum that have very high event-free survival. The scans can be terrifying, but if they make it to a children's hospital and get appropriate care they can do quite well long term. I don't care if you're a koala I choose to believe you. I found an obvious huge rectal cancer on a patient who was previously told over and over again that she had hemorrhoids frown. My sill was fobbed off with the exact same thing. Young female sever chronic abdominal pain. Finally referred for a scan which was cancelled because she was low risk. She was again in a lot of pain so my brother insisted she be checked again this time by a new physician who decided to do a rectal check. Diagnosed with colon cancer there and the immediately referred for a scan then to the best specialist in the area. Chemo, removal of most her bowels narrowly avoided a bag and a lifetime of adjustments but thankfully in remission now. Two years of being diagnosed with piles instead. I work in EMS. We got a call for a female with leg pain. When we arrive on scene, this woman's leg is three times the size of her other one, blue and purple, and she has no pulse in her foot. She fell on ice a few days prior and the urgent care didn't do any x-rays, told her she had a sprain and gave her a walking boot. In reality, her tibia and fibula were both so badly fractured they were cutting the blood vessels and muscle tissue. She lost her foot. Young student from, I think, Pakistan. He was complaining about his neck feeling stiff, he went to a doctor some days before and he was told he was having joint pains that would pass with some common anti-inflammatory drugs. When I visited him I saw many of the lymph nodes in his neck were swollen, which probably caused the stiffness, and not painful, not a good sign. Sent him right away to have a chest x-ray that showed a huge mediastinical mass, suggestive of lymphoma. 
Sadly I don't know what happened to him. Not as bad as that, but I had neck and shoulder pain and stiffness for about 5 years with docs telling me it was just soreness, tex neck, etc. and prescribing NSAIDs and muscle relaxers. Finally a new doc said to see a rheumatologist. Diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. Doc said it is often misdiagnosed or left undiagnosed. Frustrated me for so long because I knew something was not right. Edit, for those who aren't familiar, this is a great video about living with as dot if this post encourages someone to get a referral and helps to catch something earlier on, I will be super happy. As may not have a cure, but it can be managed to some degree. Edit too, holy hell. Thank you all for the support and for sharing your experiences. I'm going to try and respond to everyone. I'll be very clear that I am not in any way shape or form a medical professional so I can only share my personal experience. But, just knowing that some of you are going to look into your own symptoms with your doc is freaking awesome. And as others have noted, you can join the party on rankylosing spondylitis. Yes.